So, first things first, hello there. Uh, before we begin, I'm going to introduce myself. I'm Amanda Santos. I'm a UX writer here at Avenue Code. Um, for accessibility purposes, I'm going to describe myself now. Um, I'm a biracial, light-skinned woman with brown hair and brown eyes. My hair is very, very curly, and it's tied in an updo because it's very, very warm here today. I'm in Sao Paulo, in the great Sao Paulo area. The city is called Jadema. I'm wearing my Black Avenue Co t-shirt today, and my background, of course, is the design week background, and a light grayish uh, with uh, black letters. Um, my glasses are big, silvery, and cat eye shaped. I'm neurodivergent, so I'm also wearing my neurodivergent linear today. And I, huge nerd, <laughs> I absolutely love Pokemon, comic books, movies, and science fiction. So if you want to talk about <laughs> any of those topics, ping me on chat, but just please ping me on sometime where like we're not like super uh, occupied because I'm also easily distracted so <laughs> you know we can be talking about that for hours um what is content design first approach okay imagine you're the director of a movie or a television show you wouldn't start shooting right away without any planning, would you? Of course, unless you are, of course, Gober Hosha or Goda, you could do any script. Um, before any action is called, the content is planned. The script is written, each shot is visualized beforehand in a storyboard. There are a lot of projects, a lot of production happening, and then you get to shot action. The same thing goes for an asset, for an architect that has to understand what their client needs and wants before construction. How many bedrooms and bathrooms will they need? Air conditioners, storage system. Do they need a big sofa and a huge TV? A small kitchen, huge appliances, maybe not. So this is content first approach. As the name suggests the content comes first to ensure that one, the message is effective on its own, and two, that the design elements make it even more impactful. So the design is the part where it emphasizes the message. But what is content? In January 1996, uh, I know some of some of you were not born yet. I was I'm from 91, uh, but it was almost 30. It is almost 30 years ago. Uh, Bill Gates wrote an essay titled "Content is King," which was published on the Microsoft website. That's why our friend Bugs Bunny is saying content is king. What is content? Content is king. Yeah, but what exactly is content? Content is a very broad term that generally refers to any type of information provided by a digital platform. So uh, if you think about it, the internet is content. Without content, a website or an app is nothing more than a blank space or a placeholder, just like this lady here that's actually lacking content and it's diverging the attention from what you see written on stage. Like placeholders are great, but they're not uh, the best way. They're not content. Without content, there would be no web pages, no text, no images, no videos, nothing. All of that stuff 
is considered to different types of content. Same goes for our social media profiles, YouTube channels, or Pinterest boards, or tweets that are now access. I, I don't know what to call them anymore, um, and more. Each of these things is an empty container until we populate them with content. Posts, pins, videos, images, texts, X's, tweets, whatever you want to call them. Content is the reason for the design. So it does make sense that on any project, content should come first, right? I know it's not what happens. The concept of a content first design is not that new. Uh, it was brought into conversation on May 5th, uh, 2008, when Jeff Zeldman, the co founder and publisher of a book apart and the website, a list apart, which I highly recommend, tweeted Content precedes design. Design in the absence of content is not design. It's decoration. People usually don't go to a website to admire the visual design or download an app to marvel at the clean UI, right? We go after digital products to find, to find interesting and useful content. Take this web page by Justin Jackson, for example. It is solely words on a page. Um, with this side, Jackson shows that at its core, the web is essentially a medium for us to share messages and stories. Or the web, the digital, any digital platform is a medium for us to share content. Uh, as this web page is made only by words, and we can totally understand it, like he said. Uh, just words and you're reading them. So just a simple HTML shows how powerful content is. Any digital experience is about creating a conversation. So how can we create a conversation with users without looking at the content of that conversation first? That's why planning a conversation or the content ahead is the best way to add value to your project and improve its relationship with the user. Content should not be an afterthought and content strategy here is the key. As a UX writer myself, I know that oftentimes content is only produced at the end of the prototyping process, especially when it comes to writing. Using placeholders such as Laurie Ipsum and all its variations doesn't help us get the feedback we need on design. And it also doesn't help the development of an accurate prototype for testing, doesn't lead toward developing real solutions that can help users accomplish their tasks and it also hinders our ability to develop solutions that can achieve business goals. Look, I'm not saying uh, placeholders are the villain here. They're not. <laughs> uh, they can be beneficial to help designers highlight assumptions about where content is coming from and if such content actually exists. Uh, but it can also lead to false sense of confidence that the project is closer to its next stage than it really is. And fake confidence is not good for anyone. Of course, you should always be confident. Gabi yesterday showed us how to be confident, confident when uh, interviewing uh, users. And confidence is something great, but we should not be looking for fake confidence. Wait, does it mean that you should have every single content ready before you even start prototyping? Of course not. 
that's quite impossible. Uh, you do need to finalize content before starting design to be content first. An outline of what to expect is enough to start. And I know, organizing, assembling, and producing content can be daunting and overwhelming. And that's why it is frequently put off until the last possible moment before launch. I would feel the same as my girl Uzagi here if someone asked me to create an interface for something. So I understand especially designers when it comes to creating content and content is overwhelming. What should we do then? How to implement this content first approach to a design process? We structure, then design. I know it feels like I'm trying to say something that designers already know or as we would say here in Brazil, trying to teach the pastor how to preach, or even better, that's my favorite one, raining on what is already, already wet. But content design should be a part of the design from the very beginning. After all, content design is design. It has design on the name, so oh, come on. So rather than creating a design and filling in the content, we use the content analysis and creation approach that will lead to user experience design in the form of visuals and wireframes. We first evaluate and gather information about content, and then we start sketching our designs. See, the key word here is evaluate and gather information. We're not making anything. We're not producing anything. We're just trying to understand what content goes where before we start sketching. How to evaluate and gather information about content. Um, just take this with a grain of salt, and I'll talk about this a bit in a moment, but how to evaluate and gather information about content. You set the rules for content first design with a definition of the practice and a content strategy process. You evaluate what you have with the content inventory and audit, and you conduct the pre-vision work with the conversation map or content map. Why take it with a grain of salt? I know that a lot of designers and stakeholders are not and especially PMs uh, are not in organizations that are mature enough to have a strategy content department or a strategy uh, content, a content strategy um, governance. And I understand that this all comes with the content strategy, the governance. So especially the part where you evaluate with the content inventory and audit, not all of us have uh not all of us have um <laughs> very few of us actually that have uh access to a content management system so take it the grain of salt but pretty much it's how you evaluate and gather information about content we're going to talk about a simpler way in a few moments what are the benefits of a content first approach we should keep in mind that Content-first design is a user-centered approach that focuses on delivering the right content to the right people at the right time. In other words, it puts the needs of the users first, kind of like UX design. So content and UX design, they go together, right? They're like super friends, best friends. So what are the benefits? Um, first of all, easier navigation way better to navigate if you know your content and it is planned ahead. Better engagement so you know what content goes where and to whom. Of course, increasing social sharing and of course when the content is good, we share and we say and social sharing increase, we also increase uh, brand awareness. Uh, we also can lower our cognitive load, the user's cognitive load. Are you still listening to me? Because my computer is kind of, you went a bit cray cray now. We 
we are listening. Thank you. Um, we ensure platform consistency. My, my computer is not is not okay. Please, please work with me. <laughs> um, we get better usability. We get an improved efficiency. And I know it is not the best uh, Formula One gift here. I was going, the best gift that I could find was a Bihari one. But if anyone here is a Formula One fan right now, knows that Ferrari is not at the moment a good example for efficiency especially on that stuff so i could find uh, i could put a rebel one but i'm afraid i'm a mercedes girl so i have to put a mercedes here they're pretty efficient as well and of course a greater roi which are the magical words for stakeholders and the greater revenue And of course, um, the benefits of a content first approach. And I think this is one that's the most important. Guys, I just turned my camera off because uh, my computer, I said, is going cray cray. And <laughs> I don't know what's happening. It's OK. Don't worry. <laughs> um, if we actually uh, think, of course, but I think the principal benefit of content first approach is the improved accessibility. If you actually think about the WCAG, the Web Content Accessibility Guidelines, they are all about content. Uh, if following WCAG guidelines is the best way and the easiest way to make your digital product usable for all your customers. We, I can share uh, a guide that's really, really good and really simple about the WCAG uh, guidelines. The, I can share it with the guys after uh, the presentation and on the chat. I love it. Yay. But how do I put this all to use? How do we implement content first approach to our design? Four simple steps. Okay. Simple. Uh, one, define strategy. Two, define process. Three, map and test. And four, finalize. I'm going to talk about these four steps, and we'll talk about different scenarios depending on where your organization is regarding content governance later, like I said. So the first step is to define your strategy. Content strategy should be based not only on your organization's goals, but also on user needs. Uh, just remember that we're trying to find uh, designers are always, and of course, PMs, CEOs, they are always trying to find the best, uh, the balance between um, organization goals and marketing rules, market rules, and the user's needs and wants. So what should we do? Put yourself in your user's shoes. What do they need to know? What do they want to know? What do you want them to know? You should ask yourself this, these questions, these three questions, and create content that strikes a fine balance in between the three. Only after you determine this, you can start thinking about the design elements that would make the message you just crafted for out. So user first, always. Like this. This is a great strategy map by Lyndon Heivogel, uh, showing the actions that would need to be taken in order for the user to accomplish a task and how to consider a content during this process. She, she makes a very valid point. She's uh, a designer turned US writer. This article by her is just amazing. It shows a lot of 
how content can uh, improve UX and vice versa. So the second one is to define your process. Once you have the answers to those questions, that those three questions that we talked about before, you will also need to define your content creation process. And that includes scoping the project, putting content needs first, and then extending to design, deciding what deliverables will be needed, setting deadlines that work for both content creators and designers, outline how stakeholders will collaborate during the design process. At this point, you guys might be, especially the design of Google, but I already do this. Like, that's something that we already do. What I'm saying here is that even though it's a multi phase process that it has to be incorporated, it's not a different process than what designers already go through. It's just you have to add just a few more elements and think about content while you go through your discovery and then your production. Like this content strategy mapping by Sarah Johnson that shows you how you can add content to the process when establishing participations and deadlines early on. So right at the beginning of the project, you're defining your who does what, uh, and your deadlines and sprints and dividing the sprints and things like that. But give content a thought. Don't put content on the other end of the sprint. Don't do this. Give just give content a chance and put them a, put content first there. Just put content in the conversation. Uh, three, map and test the message. With the high level content, content strategy in place, we can start developing the message. That includes setting a more a specific purpose for each page, depending on where it will fall in the customer and user journey. Determining what main messages need to be conveyed and creating outlines and initial content, and then testing the message. When I talk about creating page outlines and initial content, like create a content brief, an outline, a first draft, and when it comes to testing the message, not just doing some internal review with stakeholders, but putting it in front of your target audiences. Getting their feedback at the stage will cut down on trial and error later. Fail fast, fail cheap. We all know that. We love that. Stakeholders love that. PMs love that. So this is the moment. That's why you should always put content uh, on your approach from the very beginning. Because it will help the users, uh, will help your testing to be more effective. Um, the best way to do this is um, sorry, how did you, yeah. defining the structure of the content and types of available content can have major benefits for digital teams and stakeholders, like I said. This structure of content is also known as uh, the content model. So what is a content model? How do I use it? How do I create one? A content model documents all the different types of content you will have for a given project. It contains detailed definitions of each content types element and their relationships to each other. You can capture a high level version of in you know, like organization chart style diagram or you can use a spreadsheet to capture a more detailed version. 
the level of detail and the model is determined uh, is determined by the purposes you need it to, to serve. I know size com sounds complicated, but it's not, believe me. Like this. This is a high-level model. This is a simple model, high-level model. A high-level model can be used to validate the concept with stakeholders and helps IAs and designers start thinking about the implications for the flow of the site, like this one from Rachel Lovinger, who is actually a content strategist and a content modelist. Most of the time, however, you need a more detailed content model that breaks down each content type into its components and provides information, such as the format you in which you expect each attribute. So this is a high level, this is simple, just here you can show when you put your, when you do your flow, your user flow, usually that's when, um, that's usually when it happens, um, put content into that flow as well, the user flow, the user journey. That's a high level model. This is very simple. See, you can see just charts, song, artist profile, album page. It's about a website that focuses on music. And of course, like I said, sometimes you need a more complex one and a more complete one, like this example um, by Maya Hampton. She's using a website for a TV channel. The content model could include content types such as series, movies, episodes, schedule listens, photo galleries, and new articles. Each of these content types has various attributes, including images, genre, headlines, short descriptions, and long descriptions. Content types also have the ability to associate one content type to another, such as linking a photo gallery to a relevant movie page. This can all be seen in a content model. It, it really looks like an organization flow chart with a lot of information, and it is part of the process to understand. So that's how you create a content model. You put them, every single content that you can think of, in plain sight for everyone to see. Creating a content model is something incredible because it creates a unity across the team and not only across the team of designers, so UX writers and designers and other types of designers like content researchers, like researchers and strategists. It also creates a good communication with PMs CEOs and the development team, because we will have all of this documented. Um, I brought the here a phrase of Mark Bolton, who's a designer, and he says, you can create good experience without knowing the content. What you can do is create good experiences without knowing your content structure. What does he mean by that? It means that right at the beginning, you said, oh, do you need everything ready? No, you don't. You need to understand what's going on. You need to have things mapped out. You don't need to, to have like every single picture ready, every single text ready, even before you start prototyping because it takes time especially when you go to stage four that's finalized you can think you have to think about it is content and design at this stage once you have decided on the page layout the messages for each page you can create the final content the design can also be finalized just keep in mind that content needs to be structured and structuring alters content. Designing alters content. 
So it's not content then design at this point. It or content or design. It is content and, and design that go together. Like this. You have a first draft without considering a content. And when you start to considering your content, you start to apply the content, see how much longer page became. When you don't think about content first, when you don't put content early on, you can really start seeing those difficulties. Like you have to alter entire layout because of it. And you have to uh, rethink. And this is this this cost costs not only time, but most importantly, and it comes to organizations, we do this for organizations, it costs a lot of money because it puts back it delays a lot of things i said we were going to talk about um two different a uh, few different um i forgot the word but i said we we're going to talk about uh specifics whether your organization has a maturity on content and and strategizing it and especially when it comes to governance and not where i work at the client that i'm allocated at we have a content ops and a strategy ops however it is a very small team so it, we do not yet have a content management system in a way. I feel like we are going towards it because we do have design ops and we do have other areas such as marketing because marketing gets into this. And of course, um, the business. And the data management also gets into this but they're all very small teams so we still are not like really connecting with each other right now but i feel like we're building towards it so i feel like the designers that i work with have access to a lot of content first approach they if they want to then can create the content first approach then can apply it but okay you, I don't have that. I don't have a design ops on my organization. How do I do this? By creating a content model. Content model is the best way and the fastest way to understand your content and what goes where and organizing it. So if you are a designer that is trying you know, to test a few processes and understanding a bit more and you know, just trying to, to do something different, or your PM that's trying to um, optimize your processes and your design processes. This is a chance to put it to work. Like content first, it is um, the best way to put this all thing to work. Said it, it's all about efficiency. It is very very efficient. I talk a lot and I talk really fast. I know we have like an hour, <laughs> but I'm already done. These are my references. And I thank you all. And please let's talk about it. If you have like any questions, any observations, any comments that you want to make, uh, feel free because we do have a lot of time. I talk really fast, I know. <laughs> Don't worry, Amanda, you went amazing. <laughs> so have some time so people can ask uh, comment, ask questions and do comments here. I don't know if anyone wants to say something. Feel free. Kath made a comment about it, how content it is important. Uh, we do have an example uh, in our team as well, where the client that I located at, and of course, 
designers, I, I, I understand, I said that, I understand content is very daunting, it is overwhelming. Uh, and it is for me to create entire pages from scratch, I understand that creating for some, creating uh, texts can be really, really overwhelming. The thing is, um, when we think about content, we sometimes you think about written content, and that's the worst part. That's the most difficult part. That I see most designers have difficulties with, but it is an effort. That is, it's worth it. Like Kat said, he she said like the the meeting before she just presented uh, just the outline without the the written content, and when she presented it today with some content there uh the work team already understood it better and i'm sure that after that it will be even best it will be even better to validate and to you have to do much less um alterations on it so uh i i I'm I'm biased. <laughs> we were talking about biases before. I am biased to say that because I really do love content. Content is something that I fell in love with a lot of time ago. Uh, and I worked with now I, I'm I'm on writing, but I I did a lot of certain types of content. So I understand the the importance of it and how amazing it can be and I just wanted to share with you guys this passion of mine and maybe you can guys you guys can try something different uh, guys something different on your processes go Nick well Amanda congrats you rock it <laughs> It's really an amazing presentation. I just wanted to share like a little bit of my experience. I'm a graphic designer and I came from an advertisement uh, agency. So there, like there was many times that people didn't have content and it was so hard to work on that project because there was so many re redoing stuff because do it again. And when we have content, it can accelerate the process and make the, the final object so powerful. And that's it, I was like, content matters a lot, not just for, <laughs> um web development or products but also for all our stuff like graphic design depends a lot on, on content and please people <laughs> use it <laughs> yeah so something that i learned working with uh, digital products is like uh fail fast fail cheap Right. If you fail early on, it is cost efficient. To uh, it takes it takes less to to correct it, and most of the time that I see it as my experiences, most of the time when a project is delayed, it's because of content. And I know it sounds uh, silly, and I'm putting like it sounds like I'm putting uh, content in a like pedestal or anything like that but just understand content design is design it's part of the process um it's like when you think about something and you put just like oh this should be like five lines but then on reality when you come to actually create the content it takes 10 and then you go okay what do i do now i don't have space for that this, this image, like, uh, this is an example. This slide that is showing right now is an example. It's a very good example of it. Uh, I wanted to put a Pokemon saying thank you. 
to you all because I said I love Pokemon. Um, there is one right here, that's a Gengar. Uh, and when I found this gift, I was like, oh, this is so cute, this is quite awesome, thank you, I need it. And then when I went to put it, the placeholder was actually slimmer and I had to alter it. So if this was a set line with a very specific um, guideline that I could not alter it, we, I would have to go back to scratching board, the designing board to create a completely new design, to create a completely new layout. So that's crazy, right? It's just the thing like it's just a gift. It's just a, a tiny gift. Yeah, but I, I you need to adapt. You need to know your content and need to know the space you take, especially the space. And please, people, don't leave content as an afterthought. Please, please, please. I'm begging you all. <laughs> uh, as a UX writer, I think Angela is here. She 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 can she can say uh, something about it as well as she's here um it is so hard because sometimes uh content as graphic as then as well the, it is related it's, it's something that comes as an afterthought and it should not be anyone else people we can talk i love talking about the subject so it can be there like until tomorrow and we'll still be talking so everyone else can want to talk um open People are shy, <laughs> but, but don't worry. The discussion can always continue in this hub or chat and you will have more opportunities. So I think this is it, right? Amanda, you made it amazing. Congrats. It was an amazing content and presentation. And everyone who was here with us, thank you so much. You're amazing too. <laughs> so Designing Week continues. We have more session tomorrow and I hope to see everyone there. Bye and thank you again. You rock it. Bye.